Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and our NVIDIA Shield TV is finally here. I know a lot of you were very eager to see this, as was I. Uh, so I wanted to uh, get this video up as soon as possible and put it through its paces. And uh, this is the hardware here. It is running with the new NVIDIA X1 chip, which is the next generation over there, uh, K1. And if you look at my uh, NVIDIA Shield tablet review that I did about a year ago, linked above, uh, you can see what the performance was of that chip. This one is faster. It's got 256 graphics cores, uh, really fast uh, CPU also and it's really noticeable, uh, especially when you're doing uh, even some of the more mundane tasks like YouTube and other things. So I'm really impressed with this. Now this is the $200 version. Uh, it comes with a, a game controller, which uh, is very, very nice. It feels nice in the hand. It is a little bit big, but it's not too big. Uh, and it doesn't have any real latency that I could see. So the response time on uh, just about everything I've been running on here over the course of my testing has been excellent. Uh, so certainly a lot better than a lot of the other ones we've looked at from other manufacturers. They've done a very good job of making sure that those latency latencies uh, were very low there. It also supports HDMI CEC, so you can control it from uh, your television without having to use another remote control. Uh, but you can also, of course, buy their additional remote control, which I did for another $50. And the reason why I picked up their remote uh, is that it has a headphone jack on it, so you can uh, watch uh, YouTube and Netflix and everything else privately if you don't want to disturb uh, anyone else in the room with you. So that was worth the extra investment for me. The game controller also does support uh, that with a, a headphone uh, microphone jack here as well, but I figured that when I'm watching TV at night, I don't really want to be uh, navigating around with a, big, uh, with a big game controller. You see what happens to it? I'd rather use the uh, little remote. These are both Bluetooth devices and they uh, charge via USB, so they both have internal batteries. What I like about it also beyond the performance is that they have put in a lot of ports that you might want to use on here. So in addition to power, of course, you have uh, HDMI output. It'll support 4K, also the CEC that we mentioned, gigabit ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, plus a, a USB OTG port, that's a USB 2.0 port, and you can plug in keyboards, mice, you can plug in external storage and get access to that data. I haven't been able to figure out how to get applications uh, installed onto the external storage yet. I think that might be coming in the next iteration of Android, uh, but you are able to put files on there that you can access like movies and music and ROMs for your emulators and uh, those sorts of things. All of those uh, ports are accessible as is the uh, little micro SD card slot here too. It'll support up to 128 gigabyte uh, micro SD card too. So you have a lot of options. And What's nice is they didn't lock anything out like a lot of these other devices do. You get access to everything you need uh, and, and really it lets you do what you want to do with it, which is really the spirit of Android, I think. Uh, it's got a fan on here though, so it does need to run a fan. I haven't really heard it all that much. I think it's pretty quiet. Uh, so even if I've been running some games, really kind of putting it through its paces, it's been uh, pretty quiet throughout. A couple more things on performance. It's got a three, uh, three gigabytes of RAM. Uh, this one has 16 gigabytes of internal storage for applications. You can also get a 500 gigabyte storage version for an additional $100. So that puts you into the $300 territory, uh, but that will give you a larger internal hard drive. But again, I think when Android M uh, comes out probably in the next six or eight months, uh, if it supports this, which I would expect it would, uh, you'll be able to install applications on external devices. And you might, you might just wanna wait until then. Uh, it supports 4K as we mentioned. It's got wireless AC two by two. It also has Bluetooth 4.1 and a, a infrared port on the front here. So you can use a universal remote with it also. Uh, uh, supports uh, all of the uh, Dolby Digital stuff and DTS uh, out the back through pass-through. And I was experimenting with uh, Cody earlier and it was able to do all that too. So it really is the full package here and we haven't even turned it on yet. So let's get this thing booted up and we'll see what it can do. All right, we've got it booted up to our home screen here. And the one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is just how fast the interface is. It is remarkably quick. Uh, and it really is a pleasure to use. And what I've really liked about it, just in the YouTube app uh, in particular, uh, you just click on something, it just starts up and it plays. There's really no delay. It doesn't get all you know slowed down or bogged down. There's no ad crashing that I've seen on uh, the Roku client. It's really been a uh, excellent uh, YouTube experience, even better than uh, what I've been seeing on Google's own player with the Nexus player. So this is a really uh, nice interface there. That video was a little bit choppy just because we're playing back a 60 frames per second video on 30 frames per second recording hardware, but it does get Give you a sense of uh, how it all works. The other thing that I like about uh, what NVIDIA did here is that they have uh, curated their games that uh, support the hardware. So if you go to download games here under that shield option, uh, you'll see on the top here it says Google Play Games, and these are all links back to the Google Play Store, but 
uh, these are things that are kind of geared towards this device. And at the moment, at the time that I'm shooting this, the only game that's really supporting the X1 in particular is these, uh, this uh, Talus principle, which we'll boot up in a second. Uh, but the other games that are uh, more demanding on hardware that this uh, X1 can support are listed here in the featured section. And there's a lot more coming also, which is good. All right, so here we are wandering around inside the demo mode of the Talus principle. And you can see just how beautiful these graphics are. Uh, this is running in Android. So this is not a streaming game that we're running at the moment. This is a native uh, X1 processor game, essentially. And you can see just how beautiful the uh, scenery is here. You've got some really neat lighting effects going on. So uh, look at that lens flare going on. It's a pretty cool uh, thing that you can do on what is essentially a mobile processor now. So I'm really eager to see this chip now make its way into a tablet. Uh, but this gives you an idea of what the uh, graphics capabilities are. But again, there's not much out there at the moment that really takes advantage of this, uh, uh, this horsepower that you have uh, under the hood of the Shield console. But it does give you an idea of what its capacity is and what its capabilities are, uh, even when you're not streaming something from a PC. Now, what most interested me about this console, though, was its ability to stream PC games over my network, and I am doing that with my gaming PC over there. Now, you're going to need a compatible NVIDIA chipset on your graphics card, and you'll need to check and see if your uh, gaming PC meets those specifications. But if it does, and you have the GeForce Experience software running on your computer, you can just pop into this menu here and connect to your gaming rig like we're going to do right now. So I'm going to click on Elite Dangerous here. It's one of my favorite space games, and I will let this... Uh, uh, launch here. It's loading up on my uh, gaming PC right now. Now you're going to see right off the bat here that we have a launcher here that we have to uh, kind of navigate with. And uh, I don't have a mouse hooked up to this at the moment, but if you hold down the little button here, uh, it'll let you use the uh, right stick as a mouse. I'm going to go over here to uh, log in and uh, just log in with my account there, and that will get us in there. You might see a little delay, by the way, between the controller and screen. It's because this is going through my video system first, so there's a little bit of a delay there. But uh, when I'm on my television, there is absolutely zero delay. It's been running very nicely. So we're going to go back over here and uh, click on play. And once this loads up, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here we are inside Elite Dangerous. We're booted up here. We're going to uh, go ahead and uh, launch our spaceship, I guess, into our uh, big star base here. And uh, as you can see, we're getting uh, uh, hoisted up here. But look at the graphical quality. This is streaming over my network. And I'll tell you what, it looks. I'm looking at the, uh, the PC screen to my right, which you can't see. It looks identical. I mean, it really just is an absolutely beautiful uh, uh, way to stream your games over here. It's just fantastic. Just look at the quality on this. And I love this game, by the way. Just the ability to kind of navigate your way out of a star base, I think, is just really, really cool. So we're going to uh, play around here a little bit. You can kind of get a feel for uh, just how responsive it is. I'll pull up my uh, remote here so you can see it just it, everything about this just feels as good as it does on my regular PC yet we are uh, streaming it over my Ethernet uh, to a Android based game console and it's doing a really nice job of it too and again just remember that delay that you might see uh, is because I'm running through my TriCaster first so it introduces a frame delay a little bit but uh, on my regular TV it works really really nicely so here we go we've launched and we've got a nice planet there and uh, you can just see there's really no you know artifacts or any kind of compression uh, things going on it looks just uh, beautiful uh, and I'm really, really pleased with this. And this is a game I've been wanting to play more. I just don't like uh, sequestering myself upstairs in my office all night. So it's something I can play downstairs while we're, my wife is working on stuff or whatever. I can uh, get, my, uh, get my gaming uh, fix here and uh, be able to do some of this stuff. So really just a remarkable uh, streaming experience here. And it's just been a lot of fun. So that is the uh, PC streaming. Uh, really impressive stuff. But we've got more to look at. So let's take a look at some emulation now. All right, we'll begin our emulation journey here with MAME and Afterburner 2. This is a game that's often bogged down my uh, OUYA in the past and some of the other Android consoles we've looked at. But the frame rate on here is great. It feels like it's running uh, pretty much at the full speed, so that is a good thing. And even though this game was from 1987, it has a habit of really bogging down uh, some of these uh, mobile devices, like or these things running mobile processors, like these Android uh, set-top boxes. So this is good to see. Uh, other arcade games like NBA Jams and a few others uh, also work pretty well on here, too. All right, we'll take a look at something a little bit more modern here. We have Wave Race running with the uh, one of the N64 emulators on Android. I think this is N64-oid. And look how nice this runs, too. Really fast, uh, full frame rate here. It really does look pretty nice. i got to figure out how to get rid of these overlays and stuff. But uh, it is working just beautifully. So for uh, most of the uh, 80s and 90s and 70s, I think you're going to be in great shape. Uh, and you can even get a little bit into uh, this century, too. We're going to check out Recast next. 
All right, here is the Dreamcast emulator called Recast running on our NVIDIA Shield console. And it is running really, really nicely, actually. There are some graphical glitches that this emulator does have, but uh, the frame rates are exceptional. And fortunately, uh, it's not giving me the actual frame rate. It's just put these two Xs up there. Uh, but I think it's running well past uh, what, it, uh, what the Dreamcast would need to run smoothly, which is basically 60 frames per second. Uh, there is a limiter that they have uh, where if you turn off that limiter, it just kind of runs at the full speed of the uh, NVIDIA hardware and it's so fast you can't control it. So I think we're seeing uh, pretty much the full frame rate here and it just looks beautiful uh, for a Dreamcast game. So really, really nice. And I think uh, you'll have some, uh, some good experiences with Dreamcast emulation. The one thing that didn't work was the Dolphin GameCube emulator, but that doesn't work on any Android devices that we've really tested just yet. It's, it's still getting there uh, on the Android side. So we'll have to wait a little bit before we get into more of the modern consoles. But uh, this is gonna do everything pretty much from the Dreamcast back. And I think it'll do all of those things exceptionally well uh, as we're seeing here right now. All right, a couple more things to check out. We're gonna go over to Cody real quick and see how this works. We're gonna start with our uh, HD home run test, which is how I watch live television in my home. So we'll uh, connect to the HD home run downstairs and see how fast we can get television booted up here. So we've got a high def channel here from ABC and a little, uh, little uh, car race going on here in the rain. That looks like it's working pretty nicely. And we're gonna back out of here now uh, and then we'll go over to uh, Blu-ray playback also, and we'll see how this does. Now, I did test the Blu-rays earlier. Uh, I was able to get uh, DTS audio as well as Dolby Digital Audio to work passing through uh, to my home theater system, so that worked pretty well. Uh, one thing I noticed, though, and it might just be my receiver, is that it didn't always uh, automatically reset the audio format. So if I switch from a movie that was in Dolby Digital to one that was DTS, uh, sometimes we get flaked out and I have to reboot the actual receiver. I haven't seen that happen before, so I don't know if it's something just driver related or what, but um, that was an issue. But we'll go maybe load up uh, Jurassic Park in the spirit of the new movie coming out pretty soon here. And there we go. This is a Blu-ray MKV file that is playing uh, over my network from a uh, WD MyCloud device. And as you can see, it boots up, uh, runs very quickly. I can seek very quickly throughout the movie and uh, things seem to be working pretty well there. So uh, I have to say, I'm really impressed with this device. This really like checks all the boxes that I would need for a media player. It is very nicely performing. It's a good gaming device, both for emulation, for Android, as well as the PC game streaming, which you saw there. It's exceptional at that. Uh, the media playback is awesome. Uh, you know, YouTube is very fast. Just about everything you're gonna do on a set-top box, this is going to do uh, exceptionally well. You're paying for that privilege though, so don't forget, this is, this is really uh, twice or even more than twice what other set-top boxes cost, but you're getting a lot of functionality uh, and a lot of entertainment value out of it, especially given uh, how well it is at a, uh, as a gaming device in particular. So I have to say, out of all the Android TV boxes I've looked at, and quite frankly, every other box that's out on the market right now, uh, this is now the one to beat. Uh, definitely recommended. I am going to be maybe buying a second one for the other TV in the house. Maybe I'll give it a little bit of time, but I'm really impressed with this. Now I want to know what you want to know. Uh, so please, I went through this very quickly. So leave me uh, some comments below about things that you want to see more of, and we'll see about doing some follow-up reviews in the near future. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.